My name is Rod Cameron. I'm a civil engineer who was involved in the horizontal infrastructure in Christchurch, and I just want to make a very brief deputation to you that we have a huge burden relating to horizontal infrastructure, which in my mind can be renegotiated. It's been described in the media by Dr. Anstis that there is a, a report that says that what was done was adequate. That's not what that report says, and that's not the basis at all of decisions that were made. Water supply, wastewater, stormwater and roading all have significant negative impacts from the disaster which live with us today. Yes, we did a lot of work in each of those areas, the council and the funders, the other funders, but the scope of work that was done was revisited three times, as described in the value of skirt report and as described on the skirt learning legacy in the scope uh, description. I don't personally have an argument about decisions that were made. People made decisions in the circumstances that they made them. But the residual impact of those things on this community is huge and, in my opinion, must be able to be renegotiated. The water supply is very fragile. Wastewater, just touching these things very, very briefly, the wastewater is also fragile and has um, physical problems. The water supply fragility has health problems. Stormwater inadequacies create flooding problems. And the roading creates emotional problems. And all of these things are a long-term legacy that's going to live with us for far too long, in my opinion and at a huge cost, and I believe can be renegotiated. That's all I wanted to, to uh, say. Madam Chair, thank you for taking me. I, I just thought I'd highlight the um, item 12.1 in the actual document that we're, we're going to be debating on Thursday. The Global Settlement Negotiation did investigate the possibility of further contribution by the Crown to the horizontal infrastructure costs. The Crown's position was and is that it has met all the provisions of the 2013 cost-sharing agreement and the emergency repair provisions under the Guide to the National CDM Plan with respect to network reinstatement for all eligible horizontal <coughs> infrastructure. This is effectively the same conclusion reached by the independent assessor in her 2015 review of the horizontal infrastructure costs under the 2013 cost of sharing agreement. The Crown does not wish to relitigate the arrangements previously settled in the 2013 cost sharing agreement and thus no further horizontal infrastructure payment by the Crown will be made. So the Crown have ruled this out. I, I agree with you that it's, um, it is completely and utterly unfair that we have ended up in a situation where the, the negotiator for the council back at the time, uh, who was the, the chief executive essentially, completely misunderstood the, um, the um, implications of the restrictions that were written into the cost sharing agreement in relation to the CDM network um, obligation. So, we were caught between a rock and a hard place because that was basically upheld by the by the independent assessor. So I mean the crowns ruled it out, um, and and that's the position that we're in. I, I'm talking to Brendan about releasing the actual. I don't think we've ever released the council paper that supported the decision making for the. Uh, for the actual cost-sharing agreement. I don't actually think it's ever been publicly released. So we, we will release it, and I'm hoping that we can release it today. Because I think once people see what was actually signed up to in 2013, they can see the rock and a hard place that exists between the council and the, um, in the present situation. I've got Sarah and Aaron. Um, thank you, and just to um, link through to that. Could I ask a, answer I just say, that statement, though? I've just got a question for you, right. um, which is kind of what I asked Gary more earlier. What leverage do you think that we've got to renegotiate to get the government to spend more money? I mean, I completely agree we need more money from the government on a horizontal infrastructure, um, and it's definitely earthquake legacy. But what leverage do we have um, to get them to do that? 
I'm sorry, I'm not really qualified to describe that, but to me it's sociological and democratic. So if we as a community make enough fuss, and if we through democratic process make enough fuss, we will change things. Okay. And do you think that that is, um, that the, the need to do that outweighs any um, uh, move forward, getting clarity and momentum and certainty that other submitters have put forward um, today? To me, clarity and momentum conflict strongly with the state of the roads which I drive over every day, which create, for not only me, others as well, emotional impact. Cool, thanks. Yep. Um, Aaron? Yeah. Rod, from your knowledge of what you worked on, at the point that that um, cost share agreement was signed in 2013, would both sides have known the total costs and the amount of damage at that point? It's hard for me to say because there was no communication between the authors of that agreement and the people that were carrying out the work and assessing the scope of work. None whatsoever. But were you not still finding more damage and after that particular date? Uh, detail of damage, yes, but the broad scope was understood. The potential scope was understood by Skirt at that time. And Skirt wasn't just an entity on itself, it was the three parties. Yeah. So the three parties knew the situation. The cost share agreement was carried out with no reference to Skirt or the three parties that were actively involved in it. It was an imposition. So Madam, yeah, now I, I'll allow you to respond to Thank me. you. Um, I believe there's a major chink in that armour that you described as the government position, which is the independent report is not an independent and is not a report. It is a reverse engineering that says the new scope as defined meets the money. The money is adequate to meet the new scope. But actually, Skirt was instructed to define a new scope to meet the money. No, I, I, I completely understand that. The, so the, the report Crown, is the Crown went back. Well, the minister went back to cabinet and got an agreement from cabinet to uh, reduce the standard around the road ceiling. So not I, only and, roads. No, no I, I was going to say and the and the scope around the um, balance of the horizontal infrastructure. But the road ceiling was specifically um, an issue for us in Christchurch, uh, and unfortunately. Uh, the, the Minister refused to share that information with us. We had to apply under the Official Information Act to get a copy of the Cabinet decision. So yes, we have had a, a rocky road, as it were, a rough ride, as you do now on your roads, um, because you know the, 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 the rules were changed part way through. But I think that what the Council thought they were signing up to in 2013 was quite different to what the wording actually said, which was the restoration of the network. It was the provisions of the CDEM um, rules that were not plain. I mean, I recall sitting there with um, Councillor David East and trawling through the CDEM requirements in order to find out what on earth this document that we knew nothing about in detail actually meant in practice. So we were on the receiving end of decisions that were taken a long time before we arrived. But anyway, you, you have raised an absolutely correct point of view um, in, in relation to the extent of the damage that still needs to be repaired and the fact that successive governments are not prepared to contribute any more to it. So it's uh, not good enough, but it is where we are. Uh, well, my deputation is that it doesn't need to be where we are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.